Hello, welcome to episode three of the Harry Potter miniature series. This um, one is going to be about bases. I'm currently working on Luna here from the, the Gen Con release. And she came on um, a base like this. Now, um, I, t I don't like them. Um, you know, it's, it's a nice pattern on there, but uh, I don't like the way that the tabs sit in there and they, you know, they, they don't sit flush unless you give them a lot of trimming. And so I thought, eh, I'm, I'm doing like a, a display piece as well that you've probably seen in episode one and two um, about the Chamber of Secrets. And the, the paving slabs on that one are quite big. So this doesn't really fit with the the theme. So I've gone a little bit bigger and made my own. So this episode is going to show you how to change from that into that. You can use these as well. You know, if, if you don't like them, there's a, there's a method. It's a, exactly the same method, but um, I'll, I'll show you how to create this. Okay, so some of the things that you're going to need are obviously bases. Um, I bought these from eBay. They're just 30mm um, lipped round bases. Um, they're really cheap to get hold of. Um, but as I said, we're going to fill in one of these as well. Um, so you will need, first of all, filler. All purpose filler. You can use poly filler, anything really. Um, this one's from a local supermarket, dead cheap to get hold of and it'll last ages. Especially if you're just doing bases. Well, I, I use it for everything. Um, I'm going to use a, a sharp knife. I'm going to use this tool or any any kind of blunt edged um, object to score in the lines. So that, that's what the ruler's for. You, know, you go across and you score in the lines. The palette knife, um, or any knife really, anything with a smooth, um, a smooth bottom to it, to smooth things out. And the last thing is a bit of masking tape, and that is purely for you know, the bases already come with slots in them. It's just for blocking the slots off underneath, so the the filler doesn't run all the way through and something to put your filler in while you're using it. Alright, so let's, uh, we've got all them sorted, so let's crack on. So the next step then is to add the, the masking tape to the back. can pull this masking tape off afterwards it's not going to stay on permanently and then I transferred some filler to a pot and I'm going to use my knife now to fill in the gap so I'm going to get a nice dollop on there so the rain's coming down again it might get a bit noisy in a minute Always rains in Wales. So I've filled in the base. I'll wipe off the the excess of the knife now, so it's nice and clean. And I just scrape across the top to flatten it off. Sorry. And we'll leave that to dry. It's just to show it's exactly the same process for the the night models bases as well. It's just a case of filling up the gap. The good thing about these lip bases is it gives you an edge to work with. So it doesn't just it doesn't just fall off the sides of the bases. it full and I'll scrape across the top get rid of the excess 
to smooth it off. That's just a case of waiting now until it dries. So I've got a few others to do, as you can see. So I'm going to crack on with them off camera and we'll come back when they're dry. Okay, so the next bit is a, a wet a bit of um, cloth to just clean up the sides. Just get rid of any excess because I'm going to be painting the, the sides black later on. I want them nice and smooth so so they look better basically so I'm gonna do that for the rest um, there's some I've already done now um, they're all fairly clean just get rid of the excess like um, see this one here I'd say a wet cloth is is best because it softens the the plaster up again Now we are ready for scoring them. So I'll just grab a, a tool and a ruler. So I was going to use this one. I'll refocus before we start. So I'm, I'm doing fairly random patterns. Um, this this tool I've found is lovely because I've, I've done some already. Um, it's a great shape it's quite rounded so it's not sharp like a knife and because it's rounded it makes a, a nice decent groove and you know the bases are dry when you hear a scraping noise if you don't hear a scraping noise it means the plaster is too soft and you probably you know end up ruining it so don't be impatient wait for it to dry properly um, I made that mistake myself uh, earlier today, which is good, you know, it's, uh, it's a learning process. <laughs> As I said, I'm going for fairly large slabs. It's going to be a staggered pattern. So take a look at it and see what you see, have a look um, to see if the grooves are deep enough for you, you might want to sort of reinforce it with the tool again, which I think I need on quite a few of these lines, I can only just about see them, especially that part there. Careful not to push too hard when you're in the middle because you're over the, remember there's um, a slot um, if you press too hard you go into the slot and you make a hole. So that's that reinforced and now I'm going to take a scalpel and I'm going to put some cracks in it. So again, don't go too deep, just scratching over the surface in some parts of it. But in others you can go deep, it's, it's good to get a bit of variation, you'll get a feel for it once you've done a couple. You know, unless you want you know, perfect slabs with no cracks in them, all you've got to do is sand them. Um, I really don't want to sand them because I like texture, so uh, this is why I'm putting cracks in it. And if you want to chip the edge of a paving stone, just dig in with your knife and flick it out carefully. These um, these little marks will become more apparent now when uh, when I put a wash over them. Okay, so that's what we'll do next. We'll get a wash and you can see all the, uh, the text. Okay, this is just for showing you what it's like now. Um, I've made a, well, it's in between a glaze and a wash. It doesn't really matter. It's just for display. Um, I'm going for grey. 
but it will show you the grooves and the cracks and the texture that you've worked on. Unless of course you want smooth bases. As I said, if you if you do, by all means score them, but then try and maybe use a bit of sandpaper or something similar to sand it down, make it nice and smooth. Uh, I do think these look a lot better than the night models one. You may not agree. It's a uh, personal choice and if you want to spend time doing it or not. But I know what I like. Yeah, you can pick any colour you want really to go with this. Um, I may do... I was thinking about doing different colours for different um, different factions maybe. Um, you know, I'm talking Death Eaters and Hogwarts pupils. Maybe the Hogwarts will go on grey and Death Eaters. Oh well, no, I don't know. Ah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, Slytherin one's gonna have a touch of green in there. Or maybe maybe the Hogwarts should go on like a sandy sandstone colour. You know, like um, the GW do a, a Carrick stone or something like that. But we'll see how it goes. So, there we are. Um, that's how, how I'm going to be doing my uh, bases. Um, feel free to uh, copy it and do your own. But um, That's the end of the episode. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, there's going to be a few more episodes coming very soon um, on a, a full tutorial of uh, Lunar Lovegood from start to finish. Uh, that'll be possibly episodes four and five, maybe six as well, I don't know, because it's, it's getting quite a long video so far. Um, but yeah, uh, if you enjoyed it, you know, hit like, get involved in the comments if you want. If there's anything you don't understand, um, give us a shout. Anything you want to see, give us a shout. Uh, I'm more than happy to try and help out and uh, yeah, that's it from me. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks a lot.